There's something ritualistic about opening the workshop in the morning, turning the lights on, opening the doors, getting the tools ready. It connects you to my lifetime spent working as a bespoke shoemaker and the lifetime of all the shoemakers who have gone before me. My name is Dominic Casey and I've been making bespoke shoes totally by hand for nearly 40 years. All of the tools that I have are second hand. They've been used by many shoemakers before me and I feel a great connection through the trade and through the history of bespoke shoemaking. Just every time I pick up a tool and realize that it's been used by many shoemakers before me and hopefully will be used by many shoemakers after me. The workshop was made in a very specific way. It was designed as a bespoke shoemaker's workshop. So all of the benches are set at a certain height for standing and working at, which allows me to cut the patterns on them, make the uppers, etc, etc. And then underneath, I have the shoemaking bench. The doors open and it's lit underneath there. And that provides me with a small seat in which I can actually sit down and make the shoes. Traditionally, shoemakers have all sat in very small seats. This old and battered seat that I sit in is a family heirloom. It was originally made my, by my grandfather for my grandmother. The reason we sit on small seats is that it makes it easier for us to actually work with the, the work in our laps. And it makes us easier when we actually get to stitch the welts in and stitch the soles on to actually hold the work in place in our laps with a leather strap and that makes it more comfortable for us to spend long hours sitting down in these small seats. A bespoke pair of shoes takes about 40 hours to make and the majority of the work is done totally by hand. In fact the only machine that I use is the sewing machine and I use this to sew together different parts of the leather to form the upper. Otherwise, everything else is done in this workshop, including carving the last by hand. Like many shoemakers before me, I hold the nails in my mouth. And I guess this is where the expression spitting nails comes from. I'm sure there's many shoemakers just like me who's hit his thumb or cut his finger as he's working and has spat out a few nails in frustration. In bespoke shoemaking, even the threads are made by hand, and in many ways they epitomise the bespoke shoemaking process. Different aspects of the shoemaking process require us to make threads of different weights. And when I say weights, what I actually mean is strands of linen. 
so the welt may be eight or perhaps ten strands of thread. The soles may be three, four, so the heavier threads tend to be for stowing in the welts. If you're making riding boots, you might be using really heavy threads of perhaps 12 strands of linen. Um, if you're doing lighter ladies' work, you may be down to eight or six strands of linen to sew the welts in. These threads are made the same way by me as they have been by other shoemakers for over hundreds of years. In the late 1980s I was sent to a wonderful Polish shoemaker who had been working for Lobs for well over 40 years. Uh, to learn shoemaking. I always used to ask him how long each thread I needed to make should be, you know, because I never knew when I was learning, I never knew how long to make a sole thread, how long to make a welted thread. And he'd always just say to me in his wonderful broken Polish, just make them the length of the kitchen. So whenever anybody asks me now, all I usually say is when they say, how long should a thread be? I always say just the length of the kitchen. So I'm still trying to make threads the length of the kitchen 40 years later. And again, what it does is it connects you to the history of the people that have taught you. And you realise that all you're doing is just holding the legacy of shoemaking until you can actually pass it on to somebody else. So in a way, that's what makes teaching shoemaking such an important thing. Because you realise that you're passing on the skills that you've kindly learned from somebody else to the next generation of shoemakers. The threads are simply made, strands of linen, twisted, waxed, and then some kind of needle or bristle attached to them. The twisting gives the strand strength. The wax generally gives the thread some waterproof structure and also helps bind the twists together. And then the needles or the bristles allow you to pass the threads through the holes that you're going to make in the leather with your awl.
The welt, which is a strip of leather, is used to connect all the pieces of the shoe together. This is really the backbone of a hand welted bespoke pair of shoes and one of the most defining characteristics that differentiates a bespoke pair of shoes from a factory made pair of shoes. The simple act of making a welt contains many of the skills that a shoemaker would need to learn in controlling knives. You've got straight cuts, you've got scythe cuts at different angles, you've got ploughing cuts. So even in this simple strip of leather, there's any number of cuts involved and any number of different hand skills involved in just making the simplest of pieces.
Nothing has changed in this process since I was taught it by a Polish shoemaker over 40 years ago. He had learnt it as a boy when he had come over to England after the war and had gone to Lobs and learnt to become a shoemaker. In this way you feel yourself really connected to a generation of shoemakers beforehand. He had learned it from somebody else beforehand at Lobs. And so all of this is just passing down a legacy of shoemaking.